Hello everyone and welcome. I'm very excited to be here today. I have oh, just a lot of things to talk to you about and we're going to talk about stitch regulation. We're going to talk about it um, using our domestic home machine, um, what needs to happen for it to work, and on your quilting machine. So I'm going to cover both of them, but before I get started on the stitch regulation, I wanted to show you that I'm with Cupid Quilt. I got it quilted and I just wanted to show you, first of all, the designs that I came up with. I don't even know if I showed you these. These are my doodles. <laughs> my doodles, you know, just messes of what I was thinking I wanted to do. So, and then I did show you this, my notebook. And then what, and how it came out. So, it's kind of fun. So it's all quilted. And let's see if we can. So I used a double layer of batting. I, I think I told you that last time. And it just makes the little hearts pop. And I was actually testing out a new foot that we're going to come out with that really does echoes very nicely. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I can't talk about it yet, but it's coming. So, and then I just did little heart echoes. So things really did change as I was quilting. So I did the little hearts in all four corners. And then I did something different. I highlighted it with just straight stitches going up and down, up and down, up and down. And it just turned out really fun and really cute. So if you don't have your pattern and you want it, just e email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, at grace, G-R-A-C-E, frame.com. And look at the back, I had some extra pieces, so I, don't go too close, because <laughs> um, you'll see all my mistakes. But anyway, I had some extra pieces, so I did XO, XO on the back, and it just turned out really fun and really cute. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy making your I'm with Cupid. I had a lot of fun, and just like anything else, it does take time to quilt. So. All right, so now that I've covered that and I've talked to you about that and how it's morphed, let's talk stitch regulation. Okay, I love stitch regulation. Everybody who doesn't have it wants it. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. First of all, I'm going to jump over and talk to you about it using your domestic machine. Now, stitch regulation. There are a few out there that don't need a frame. Um, Bernina has what they call their VSR, and it has stitch regulation, and it works pretty darn good. I know that there are other companies that have stitch regulation out there, and, and they do not uh, use a frame or sense the movement, and so let's make sure that you understand how it's supposed to work. So when you're moving your fabric, underneath, um, on your table, under your machine, it has a little bump and you can hit that bump. So you can only quilt so much of the area because it can only sense. So I know that Juki also has stitch regulation, um, but we also make a stitch regulator that plugs in and that you could only use on a frame. Um, and so I'm gonna jump over to this cutie frame that we introduced and talk to you about how it works. So a stitch regulator, what it does is it senses the movement of the machine, or the speed of the machine, and it, it jumps in and it tells the machine to go faster or slower with your movements. But how it senses the movements are little things, they're called encoders. And the encoders, it just, it's just like the name, it senses your movement, and as you're moving it faster, the machine will kick in and start moving uh, sewing faster. The needles start going up and down faster. Now, every stitch regulator has to work within the parameters of any sewing machine that you have. So if you have a sewing machine that's a little slower, um, then it's going to work within that speed of that machine. So just know and recognize that you can't jump in and start moving your 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 machine faster than it can sew, and you'll get start get really irregular stitches. So it's just like cruise control um, on your car. 
once you have it plugged in, it takes a little bit of time for it to accelerate or decelerate. So you might get a little bit of an inconsistent stitch, but don't worry about it. It keeps it better regulated. It's not going to keep your stitches exactly even because you are not computerized and you are not going to maintain that even movement. Now you'll get really good at maintaining and moving your machine around, but it's not going to keep the stitches exactly the same because you're moving the machine and you're not computerized. So that's just a little lesson on how stitch regulation works. Let me jump in and show you how easy it is to set up stitch regulation. It's not complicated at all. So what you have are two encoders, okay? One encoder, and we're gonna go back over here on the back of the frame. One encoder is for the bottom carriage right here. And it's your side to side movement because this is the one that, this is the part of the carriage, the bottom carriage that moves from side to side. Now you have an encoder that's mounted to either the top plate or your sewing machine and it's your front to back movement. So with these two encoders, it senses the full motion of the machine on the carriage. So you're gonna get those nice circles rather than the squares that you want, that you get all the time if you don't have it. Okay, so right back here is a little box that it's your main brain. So this is how it works on the domestic machines. So this main brain, has five separate plugs or ports that are on in it, okay? It has one that comes out from the side that plugs into where your foot pedal would plug in, okay? That's why you need the cord that matches your foot pedal port. Then it has another plug that plugs into the outlet. So on this type of, for the domestic machine, you have to have it plugged into your power outlet or an extension cord that's plugged in, okay? Then you have another cord that goes down below, well, on this one and on other frames, so it'll go up and over onto the carriage. So, and this attaches to your display. And then your two bottom ports are for your encoders to plug into. So that's a little bit about how easy it is to plug in and get it going. Now on this cutie frame, we have given you brackets to mount your encoders onto, and it's just easy. You just screw them in and make the tension correct. So these little levers here are little collars, and what they do is allow it so that you push it up, that it will spring down towards the track. And that's how it, it's forcing that tension down towards the track, and that's how it'll sense your movement. So I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna turn it on. And I just wanted to show you that we're not using our foot pedal any longer. Uh, we don't have to. We don't have to push down on it because we do have stitch regulation. And let me just tell you this, if you are not sure that if your machine is compatible, um, Bright's gonna put a compatibility chart up there for you and it will show most of the machines. There are a few out there that we do have stitch regulation for like some of the SVP, Husqvarna, Viking, and FAF machines, the designers, and I can't remember the name of the other ones, but if you have questions and you don't see your machine up there, give us a call. It's 800-264-0644, and let us talk to you about it and see if it might be compatible and it's just not listed. So you know, make that an opportunity to call and ask questions, or you can just email. That's perfectly fine. So remember, I told you that this cord here, it comes from the back uh, that's plugged into the main brain to the front to your display. And on the display, you have little speed buttons that will move the speed up and down. So a rule of thumb on the speed buttons is if you do not know your design that you're working with, um, slow your machine down. So make it be a little slower so that you can learn. And then as you start getting familiar with that design that you're quilting, then you can turn the speed up. And you don't have to turn it off to turn it up. You can just turn up the speed as you're quilting. And you can do that on the other machines too, the long arm machines. Um, then another thing to remember is that 
when you turn it on on the domestic machines, because you don't have different modes of strict regulation, that it will start move the needle will start moving up and down. So you want to make sure that you start moving it and you don't leave it in one place too long. And if you listen, I'll shut up here, you can hear it speed up and slow down. Now, you don't want to max out the speed of your machine, so make sure if your machine has a speed regulator on it that you will make sure that you move it up to the highest speed and let Let the stitch regulator regulate your speed. So turn it to the rabbit if you have a stitch regulator, and then you'll just kind of make your movements. And you can see how my stitches look really pretty nice and consistent. Now, I can max out my machine by moving it really fast, but these Juki machines are pretty fast machines. That's what makes it so awesome. <laughs> so you can see that my stitches get a little bit larger here because I'm maxing out the speed. So make sure that when you turn it on, especially if you're using your domestic machine, that you jump in. Otherwise, you'll get a little ball of thread underneath from having it sit there and move up and down, up and down, up and down. OK, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is jumping in and regulating your stitches or helping keep it nice and consistent. And like I said, if you know your pattern or your design, you're going to have a tendency to move it a lot faster because you know it and you're so familiar with it. Just like driving to your home in the car. You know where you want to go and the closer you get to home, you get more excited so you want to step on the gas and get home. So that's just how it is with the design or anything. The more familiar you are with it, you want to get it done. So turn up the speed and let it go a little faster for you. Um, so then with this machine also, I want to stress the importance of pulling up your threads from the bottom. Um, I thought I had done a really good job on my little, I'm with Cupid quilt, but I still had threads down underneath that I had to pull out using a pin, you know, so it looked a little nicer. So make sure that you um, do your needle up, pull your thread forward. So that's when you pull it forward so you get a tail underneath. Then just move it back to where you stopped and do your needle up down again. And then it'll pull up your bottom thread and then you can just cut it off. And just make that a practice. And yes, you'll have a little wad of um, threads hanging out there, but you know you've done your job and you've done it really well by just cutting all those threads off. And then as you're quilting, you won't get hung up on a thread underneath because you can get caught up on a thread underneath and it can catch on the bottom carriage um, because of the distance away and or something can catch underneath and it could cause uh, you to have a problem with your design. So make sure that you're pulling that thread up and quilting with it. Um, so just want to show you another little feature on this. It's called the pulse button. The pulse button is just a manual mode of quilting um, with the stitch regulator. So I can just push on the pulse button and just keep it in manual mode. And it's great if you just want to start and stop really quick or do a nice small area. Now let me show you the box that it comes in. It comes with everything you need to mount to your frames. It comes with this nice huge manual, because we've been in business a long time, and we've made a lot of different quilting frames, and our stitch regulator works with a lot of our different quilting frames. So if you have an older frame, and you want the stitch regulator, yeah, check out the compatibility chart, and yeah, it will work with most of our, our older quilting frames, as well as the new ones here. Um, maybe a little bit more time in setting it up because this cutie frame is awesome and very easy. And then I just wanted to show you we have one other thing. On some sewing machines we have what we call a speed control. Now there's difference between stitch regulation and speed control. A speed control is just um, replacing your foot pedal. That's all it does. It doesn't regulate your stitches at all um, and that's what the stitch regulator is so much more expensive than just the speed control because it does so much more. And you know, if you're doing a lot of quilting and you want to take the headache of 
the pushing down on your foot pedal, the stitch regulator is an awesome thing to get. Um, so let me just jump over here and we're going to talk about the stitch regulation on our long arm machines. Now this is built in stitch regulation. So the only thing that you have to really attach it is that this has got its main brain inside of it. So you're also mounting your encoders. So you'll mount the encoder to the top wheel of one of your, mach of your machine um, and it needs to go on the side that the ports that it plugs in are on. And then you have a bottom encoder that's um, underneath that's your side-to-side -side movement. So you're covering the whole spectrum of your movements so you'll get those nice circles and beautiful stitches that you want. Now with this uh, machine, you get different modes of quilting. So you get different modes of stitch regulation. So the first mode is regulated precise. And it's a preset for all the machines that go out. Um, regulated precise is an awesome mode, but it's not a mode that you would use all the time for everything that you're quilting. So again, I want to stress the importance of finding out what you like by testing um, and, and changing the different modes and see which mode you like the best and you will find your comfort zone and what you like. I want you to try the manual mode. I want you to try the cruise mode. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the different modes and how I use them. But I don't want you to take my word for it because I don't want you to quilt like I quilt. I don't want you to do everything I say. I want you to go out there and experiment and learn for yourself what you like. This is you. You're the quilter. It's not me. And everybody's going to have their likes and their dislikes. So go out and experiment and enjoy the process of quilting and finding your own groove and your own technique. So let's just jump in. Regulated precise. When you turn it on, the machine stops. When the machine stops moving, the needle stops. And there's some debate going out there as I was reading and, and doing my research on stitch regulation that regulated precise, some ladies like it for ruler work are using ruler. Um, others don't, they like cruise. So jump in and try it. But if you're using the ruler base and the ruler work, you want to be able to have your needle stop in the down position like I have now because I changed it last week because I was using the ruler and the ruler base. So, And then it helps you so that you can reposition your ruler to the right area and then you can just start where you left off. So I like regulated precise because of that. Now, another thing I like about regulated precise is when I go into a curve, I can get a sharp point. Now, some people, they like cruise for that because it tacks down your stitches. So again, I want you to try it and see which mode you like for when you're coming into from a spiral to your point or if you're making flames. So just test it and see which mode you like. Now, I'm going to change this. So I, I've talked to you about regulated precise and and you, if you know your pattern, your design, turn up your SPI, your stitches per inch, because you will want to move the machine faster. Now, you can max out any machine. Again, I've, I've warned you. Um, this will stitch 2,000 stitches. Um, but if I go fast, I can really max it out. So I don't want to do that. So I want to just stay within the parameters that I can sew. But I can turn up my stitches per inch and it allows it to go faster. So if you know your design that well and you can move it really, really fast, sometimes if you know a stipple design or something like that and you're just cranking through it, turn up the stitches per inch. Okay. So now that I've talked to you about that, let's jump in and talk about regulated cruise. And what I like about this 19 is I can just touch the screen and change my modes of quilting. So now I'm in regulated cruise. Now regulated cruise, I like it because it gives you that extra stitches. It's a lot like your domestic machines. Um, some machines are so slow that they can't quilt regulated precise. And a lot of the domestic machines, 
um, are so slow uh, that they can't quilt regulated precise. That's why it's only cruise. All right, and so when I turn it on, notice how the needle is going up and down. Now, on this machine, I can slow it down to 5%, so it's not moving so fast, the needle going up and down, so it gives me a little thinking time. But I like this mode for stipples or circles. And if I want my pebbles and everything to look a little more rounded, I'll turn up my my speed on my needle and then I'll also turn up and then I can so then you could just make your pebbles nice and rounded and smooth so just test them out and try it now some people out there like it because they say that when you come into a point it tacks down that point I I don't know I I have some if you leave it at that point for too long, you're going to get a buildup. So be careful about how fast you have it going, but test it out. You know, don't take my word for it. Just try it and see what mode you like. Try your different stitches out um, that you like. So yeah, I would slow it down to 5% and then go into it. But you can try it out. Okay. Now, with this regulated cruise, if you're cruising along, I, I just like it because it just keeps it going and it keeps the nice stitches rounded. So this is a little, I love quilting, you can tell. Yeah, I could do this all day. <laughs> Um, anyway, just jump in and try the different modes. Um, do I have any questions? Okay, so let's take a couple questions and, and see if we can't clear a few things up that maybe I've just kind of stumped you on. <laughs> yes, this frame over here is our new little cutie frame. I, and I brought this stool over so I could show you how nice it is. You can adjust the handles and sit and quilt at it. Um, so. I'm really into hearts lately because of the cutie quilt, but <laughs> quilting is so much fun. Anyway, so it's just really easy to set up. Oh, wow, well, this is so easy, and it's just a nice little bundle to handle your huge quilt. So this does not limit you to the size quilt you can quilt. And with your domestic machine, man, it makes a great little powerful um, quilting duo with you running the machine. You'll crank through quilts in no time. So was there another question? Huh? Oh, this is our Q-Zone Queen frame. I love this frame because you can sit or you can stand at it again. So you can adjust the legs. And I like to get a good rolling chair so I can just sit and quilt. Now what's nice about both of the frames is that this front pole here will extend out to accommodate longer arm machines. So on the cutie frame, you could put this 19 inch machine on this frame. Um, on this frame here, um, with stitch regulation, you could put your domestic machine. Um, so it, it, it doesn't matter. You could purchase a frame and a com use a domestic machine with the stitch regulation and then when you're ready to upgrade to a longer arm, you will be ready one day. Um, you don't have to change frames. So we have so many options out there for you. Um, so please call if you have questions or if I totally confused you, I hope I haven't. I hope I've made it clear about stitch regulation. And um, so Carrie, I have a 15R. Is there a way to slow it down so I don't move it too fast? Yes. Okay. However, your stitches will get a little bigger. So turn down the SPIs using these buttons on your 15. Okay. These are the buttons that move your speed up and down on the 15R. And if you have questions, go to your manual. The manual will show you what the buttons do for your 15R. So those manuals are an awesome resource. Um, it says, Beth, 
says, I'm curious how the Jazz 2 will work since there's less vertical clearance. Um, I've only seen the Juki on the QD. Yes, the Juki, the, on the Jazz 2, it's a newer machine. I don't know yet if it's compatible with the stitch regulation. And the Jazzes are a little slower machine as well. Um, so when you're quilting, it's nice to start out with your home machine and you could start out using the foot pedal, but what's nice is to have that speed. Um, so you can speed up and slow down and it can stay with you um, so you don't get those long stitches. So just check it out. Um, yes, you could use your Jazz 2 with the foot pedal for right now. And the foot pedal is great because you can max out your speed and you're very familiar with your foot pedal. So, so go for it. Uh, um, I cannot say your name, but you have a beautiful picture by it. And it says, it's sand. I have gotten pretty good with my hand movement and foot on, with the pedal. I, will I end up quilting slower with the sure stitch um, installed? No, you'll probably even go faster. Um, because it will free up that, that hand-eye coordination and actually make it easier for you to speed up your movements and get better regulated stitches. And kudos for you to be able to move and use your foot pedal. Uh, that's awesome. And because you do get, you get into the rhythm and the rhythm's really important. You get into this little groove as you're quilting because you know your design and you kind of know your speed as you're going around the corner, just like you're learning your driver's ed. So uh, I have a kid that likes to take corners faster than others. <laughs> so you learn that little groove. So anyway, it, any other questions? Uh, can you use it on a baby lock tiara? And I have a Q-zone hoop frame. And no, the stitch regulation will, will not work with the baby lock tiara. Um, however, you're using your foot pedal, so go for it. But you can graduate to, um, I don't know which frame did you say she had, the hoop frame? You can graduate to a self-regulated machine that has stitch regulation, and it's a little bit longer arm because you can extend it out. So, so any other questions? And I'll let you go and start experimenting and give us a call. You can email me as well. I'd be happy to hear from you. I, I love hearing from you and I love your questions. I love helping you with um, things that you need help with. Um, so just let me know. So it's Carla with a K at graceframe.com. And, and we're here for you. So if you have any other ideas that you want us to cover. And next week, what were we going to talk about? Oh, a pantographs. Sorry. Yes, so I'm doing my research on pantographs. Sorry, I was so focused on the stitch regulation. So next week, we're going to cover pantographs. And this is just free motion pantographs. I may talk a little bit about lasers and our pattern perfect, but really I'm going to talk to you about how to use a free motion pantograph and how you should set it up on your frame and kind of the different ways of quilting that pantograph so it looks kind of random and not so even or straight across. So next week, that's what we're going to cover. I'm really excited to learn everybody's techniques and bring them to you. So I look forward to seeing you back here next week and have a safe and happy week and enjoy quilting.